If we've learned anything from the failed voice to parliament referendum, it's that whilst the rejection of the proposed voice was resounding, continuing with the status quo in relation to the welfare of First Nations Australians is not an option. A new approach is needed urgently, particularly for those living in remote communities. Their voices must be heard. The breakdown of the vote has been an interesting and very revealing exercise. In the Northern Territory, where the population comprises 30% of First Nation Australians, around 60% voted no. However, a closer look into the Northern Territory voting pattern reveals that in the vast majority of remote Northern Territory Indigenous communities, there was a strong yes vote. The electorate of Lingiari covers all of the Northern Territory except for Darwin and Palmerston. It has the highest proportion of Indigenous residents in the country at 40%. This is Lingiari. Now, much of their population live in remote parts of the Territory. And so whilst the overall yes vote in Lingiari was around 42%, yes, 42%, the remote booths were very different, with the yes vote being around 72%. 84% voted yes in the Tiwi Islands, 91% in Wadai, 87% in Manangrida, and 78% in the Central Australian communities of Amanguna, Papunya and Ataria. And 75% voted yes in Yunnamu. Now this pattern wasn't just in the Northern Territory. The community of Palm Island in the Queensland electorate of Herbert have an Indigenous population of around 91%. The Palm Island booth had a yes vote over 75% compared to the overall Herbert vote of just 24% voting yes. You can see the difference. The overall yes vote in the Queensland seat of Kennedy was less than 20%. Yes, 20%. Mornington Island is in the seat of Kennedy in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It has an Indigenous population of more than 80% and delivered one of the highest yes votes in Queensland at almost 78%. Also in Kennedy, in an area stretching just south of Cairns, Yarraba has an Indigenous population of 95%. Now its yes vote was around 75%. The voice has been shown not to be the change that most Australians want. But the Australians in remote communities did vote for change. On average, Indigenous Australians living in remote areas experience higher rates of the burden of disease, and lower life expectancy compared with other Australians. Aboriginal infants are close to four times more likely to die in childbirth than non-Aboriginal infants. Aboriginal women live on average around 13 years less than non-Aboriginal women. Aboriginal men, 11 and a half years less than non-Aboriginal men. Aboriginal Australians are more than two times as likely to die from intentional self-harm. And suicide is the leading cause of death for Aboriginal children aged 5 to 17. Key contributors to these statistics include lack of access to health services, inadequate housing, poor quality of drinking water, and other missing factors that support healthy behaviour, such as the availability and cost of fresh fruit and vegetables. Poor health affects the socioeconomic environment. It's very hard to contribute meaningfully to society when you're unwell. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities are far less likely than other Australian towns of the same size to either have a hospital or be within 50 kilometres of one. In the Northern Territory, 75% of the roads are unsealed. In these remote communities, there will be Australians who are experiencing disappointment, sadness and even anger. The debate we have just had has been divisive but it can also now be used as a powerful catalyst for all Australians to unite, to strengthen relationships, to work together as one people, respecting each other, committed to reconciliation, determined to close the gap that still exists for Aboriginal Australians in areas such as health and housing infrastructure. We live in a wonderful country with our bountiful natural resources and the beauty of our landscapes, but most importantly, our people. We voted safely in this referendum without fear of reprisal. That's what Australians do. We debate. We allow others to have a different point of view. We vote democratically without bloodshed. And this is a wonderful gift. But it should not lull us into a sense that everything is OK and that there's nothing to see here. There remain very real challenges facing our First Nations people that should be addressed with a sense of urgency. 
Our Prime Minister and Opposition Leader both acknowledge this and they have called on all Australians to come together and to move forward into the future united. Now, this can only be achieved through listening, mutual respect and action. Don't make insensitive comments on social media. Remember, many Indigenous Australians still carry the hurt of not even being counted in their own country prior to the successful 1967 referendum. The Bible tells us to love our brothers and sisters, to love our neighbours, just as Christ loved us, so we should love others. Love even our enemies. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bear with one another. Keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Reconciliation is core to the Christian faith. God went to great lengths to offer reconciliation through Jesus. And as recipients of his amazing grace, he now expects us to be ministers of reconciliation. Christians are known for their generous support of overseas humanitarian projects that provide clean drinking water, suitable housing and health facilities in isolated communities. But many are unaware that Australia also has communities without clean drinking water, suitable housing or health facilities. And we don't need to wait for our government to bridge the gap. Every single one of us can be part of a promising future for every Australian. God bless you.